Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit radical, a little bit abstract and in just a couple of colours. So let's roll that intro. Let's see exactly what happens. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, I am going to be doing something just a little bit radical for me. I say radical, but it's not that radical. To you maybe, those of you who recently joined my channel may not know that I do a lot of this, but when I get the chance, I love to play around with just a couple of colors and do some little landscape abstracts. I did a whole load of them during the end of last year for my gallery in Hive to sell. And I've started doing a few larger ones and the whole process of the not knowing exactly what you're going to get actually intrigues me. So what I've done is I've done a video now which I am exploring just a couple of colors and that's going to be Payne's Gray and the uh, translucent Pyrrhal Orange from Daniel Smith. And I'm going to play around with those with a few extra techniques and I'm going to do that for several videos to come but this is going to be the first one so i'm going to roll and let i'm going to roll <laughs> i'm not going to roll i'm just going to get on with it and let's see what happens i hope you enjoy it take care catch you at the end okay then so the colors i'm using tonight are really just two i'm going to be playing around with the uh daniel smith's Pyrrhal orange and the uh windsor and newton Payne's gray so i'm going to mix up really two palettes, two pots. There we are. Ideally set up. Lots of water in both. Let's get that orange working and let's get that into place. Lots of it. Different strengths and I can come back in and add to the strength of that if I want to. And let's come in here while we've got some going on and let's pick up some of this lovely Payne's Grey. Look at that. Doesn't get much stronger than that. It's a lovely color to play with. And when added to the orange, really does create some wonderful ideas. Now, there is no reference for this picture tonight. Simply working. I've got a little bit of a reference in my head. And it's just a bit of a snowy scene local to me. But I just felt that it would lend itself to this picture overall. Now, I'm going to pick up some of that orange at the same time. And I'm going to play around. I'm just going to, I want to create a lovely loose sky. So I'm going to come in, mixing the two together. And oh, look at that. Quite a bit of water. That was more of an accident than it <laughs> should have been. I've got to say, I caught the edge of the board as I came over there. But not a problem because I quite like what that's done. So I'm just going to come over and complete a bit of a sky. Now I'm going to add some darks as I come down. I want to suggest sort of a river or something coming through here, like a little ditch and some of the oranges that are on top of the ditch, something like that. And then I've got a field going on over here, but this will be my sky here. Not too sure about it yet. Let's see how it goes. And this part is just going to be just a little bit of orange there and maybe some of that lovely blue through there this is like a snowy field through there and winding its way across to the top of the field over here so let's see how i'm going to go on with that and i want to use a little bit of water spray okay now the idea of this is i've got it on a block but i've also got the ability to turn my panel around and just play with this. Just running some of this color out. And I'm also going to use quite a bit of tissue to mop up anything that is just too much for the paper. Keep the edge of your masking tape nice and dry if you can. Keep that running that way because what will happen is that the water will sit on here and it will find its way back by pushing into the um, paint and you don't really want that so 
you can play around with this as much as you want to. I'm going to run that out. Don't really like that there. So I'm going to run that out. Gets rid of that. Quite like what it's done, but I'm going to tap back into that now. Okay, and I can run that through again. All right, now let's look at this sky or supposed sky. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run quite a bit of water down here and just wash back some of that color and off. Anything about this type of work, as you can see, it does make an awful big soggy mess of everything. <laughs> just be warned, if you've got a lovely cloth somewhere that you can do this one out the way where it doesn't mess up your working area, then that will be a good plan to do. Quite like what that's doing. There we go. Alright. Okay, so I'm going to drop in some lovely dark blues now. I'm trying to suggest some cloud movement. But I'm not quite sure what I'm doing yet. I'm just literally I'm winging it to be quite honest with you. Just winging it. Just see what happens. I run that off again. Run that down as well. Go through a whole roll of paper, I tell you. There's so much fun. Now we've washed an awful lot of this out, but it does suggest a bit of a horizon line through there for me, which is quite interesting. Picking up little bits where it's starting to build up and it might well run. Now you have choices here because you can carry on working it or you can indeed wait for it to dry and then layer over the top of it. Almost feel like turning it over and seeing what that looks like. Let's have a do. Let's do that. Let's just see what it looks like. See what it might suggest to us. Not actually suggesting any more, to be quite honest with you. So let's turn it back the other way. And let's carry on dabbling and playing. Let's just use this calligraphy brush and just pick some dark colours up because what I'm trying to think of is a bit of a ditch through here. So I'm just going to drop some of that color quite literally. I don't I've never used these brushes before. I have no idea. They were given to me in a set of Chinese calligraphy and I to be honest with you, I'm not too sure if they're good or they're bad. But um we shall see. I'm just trying to draw suggested shapes now that could be um a big bush over here maybe. I'm not sure about that area there. I'm tempted to pick out and get rid of some of that by adding some warmth into that. I think we'll do that, see what happens there. Let that work its way through. And this could well be something like a branch of, or branches of a um, bush or shrub in the corner. That's what it's sort of suggesting to me at the moment. And that can come deeper and darker at its base into there. Now that's going to run any second, so let's get rid of that. Take that off through there. Just generally have a feeling for what you're doing. Just 
be mindful of what can happen, but at the same time, don't hold back. At the end of the day, it's a bit of paint, a bit of time, and a bit of paper. It's nothing more than that. But I quite like this as a bank edge, maybe, or a bit of a furrow in the field there. And we can use the sort of areas between to suggest the depth and dark in here of what could be the ditch. I'm going to carry on with that idea for the moment to see what happens. I've got a hair that's coming out of there, so it's not a very good quality brush. I know brushes can drop their hairs, and I think that they should hold on to them a little more than they are than this one is doing. Okay, so I'm going to go with that, and I'm going to come back in with some blue, but once that's dry, I'm just going to, well not dry, but drier. I'm just going to try and suggest that we've got a distance line something along there something that is um, suggestive of branch, uh, trees in the fields beyond something like that and already we're starting to suggest a landscape albeit quite crudely but it is a landscape and it may be that we carry on this way until the actual painting is dry enough to layer over the top I like some of this in here. That really is working quite nicely. Now, I don't like my paintings like this to get too heavy, and I like to try and leave as much white paper as I possibly can. What I'm going to do here is eat into some of these areas here, becoming quite suggestive as to little bits of foliage sticking into whatever is growing there so just literally pushing some of those colors back into themselves at this point by tapping away I like that I gotta say I do now then a um, bit more dark I think just through here there's a lot of hairs coming out of this brush gotta say it's dropping some and it may be the one and only debut of this particular brush um, it, I do like the idea of these calligraphy brushes but they I think that uh, I need to understand that um, there are obviously qualities of them and it's getting hold of a decent quality one I think or several quality ones maybe that are not going to just completely drop the contents all over your painting which this one seems quite able and happy to do so there's bright there's little bits everywhere but at the moment i'm having fun so i'm not too worried i'm going to let some of that dry off naturally I'm going to come back into that and play around i think i want to add some more colors to the sky i think that we are missing something up here so we will come back and we will carry on when it's all dried off okay before i go too much further this i'm just going to give that a little spray in a couple of places just to liven some of that up and then i'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of table salt nothing special about that i want to sprinkle that into some of these areas here and I hold it down quite level let it dry it's probably gone could have been a little wetter but i think we just about caught it in time just to put that area through there it's like wildflowers that sort of stuff i think we've got enough going on there and let that dry totally before you attempt to brush it off if you put salt on too soon what will happen is that it just mixes with the water dissolves or the water literally dissolves the whole thing so I think that I've got enough. I'm just going to probably just put out a little bit more, just to be on the safe side. I don't know if you guys are like me. I'm superstitious, so I always try and leave a little bit in my hand that I can throw over my shoulders, spilt salt. <laughs> Something my mother taught me. All right, we will come back. Once that's dry, you can already see some of the effect that the salt is just picking up the 
pigment around it, drawing it into the salt, which it obviously does, and it will create some wonderful little marks through there as this paper dries off to a complete finish. Once that's done, then we can see what it suggests to us and we can carry on with the painting. Hi everybody, welcome back. It is the next day. This has had a whole day and a night to dry off thoroughly and I've wiped away all the salt and it is completely dry, as I said. Now, I just absolutely love the way that you create some marvelous effects with different ingredients. In this case, salt, you could be using clean film. You can use all sorts of masking and one or two other things, I'm sure, besides. But salt itself, you never quite know what you're going to get. And you can put it on in greater densities. You can put a little splash of water on, which I think I did uh, earlier in this painting. And everything will be affected. And the take up of the paint depends upon how uh, wet or damp the surface is when you apply the salt. Please remember, don't apply any salt to this when it is quite damp, quite wet, because all that will happen is the excess water will melt away the salt and cause you more problems. You don't really want that. And then you can start looking at your overall design and seeing how it sort of speaks to you, how you can see things within what you've just done, how you want to take your painting forward, maybe to the last or the next stage uh, of its development. Now that's where we're at tonight. And I am going to do a little bit more. I'm gonna do a little bit more, perhaps a little more conventionally. I'm gonna put in some structures, like some trees or tree forms on this side, maybe a little bush or something up in here that goes up into that sort of area there just more suggestive more recognizable elements to this painting right first things first i am going to wet a little area through here and not much i just want to see what happens by applying some other darker or warmer colors and first and foremost i'm going in with a smaller round brush just re-energizing this paint from yesterday and adding some strength to it from over here and i just want to tap in a few areas that could be some of the reeds that are growing up. Now I'm not quite sure how I want this to look and I think a lot of paintings in this fashion are a little bit a seat of your pants affair. <laughs> I hope you don't mind me saying it, but it is. You're never quite sure what's going to happen. So I'm just taking the softness out of that and letting those areas run down. I can add to them and that's what I will do. I shall add to their warmth and let them grow up organically into the space above. But I don't want to lose all of those beautiful um, frosty looks from the salt. But in doing this, you are actually coloring them back. You're also you're staining some of those lights and those darks that have been created by the salt drying out the pigment. And I'm using the very tip of this brush now just to create some smaller, more suggestive spikes. And you can do that quite easily with a dagger. You can do it with a rigger. All of these brushes will work in that purpose and serve you well. So you, I'm gonna use a rigger now just to show you almost the same mark. If you don't want the paint to move so much, then put a little thicker paint into the mix like that. If you find, however, that it's not enough it's too much there you can get your little spray bottle out and just literally spray it out and allow some of that to free up and disappear here we go again i see we need a lot of kitchen towel just to arrest some of that movement into there quite like what we've got going on here that makes it very warm very rich in this corner and how far out I go with some of this, I'm not too sure yet. I'm just going to put in a few pieces, and this is my choice. This is not totally, I have a little image here in my head that I was sort of referring to. It is only a snow scene in a ditch. I may post it up uh, as a small addition in the bottom corner of the picture at the end of all of this, but it's just to give me an idea, and it's also hopefully going to give you an idea if I put it up there that you can create your own version of this now I want to I don't know I'm sort of thinking of coming up here with a great big old tree I think I'm going to go and do that just there 
great big old tree. I say a big old tree, it's a spindly old tree, but there's going to be a lot of sort of growth coming down in here. And that could be ivy or something, but I'm just going to break that up. Just going to soften how you see that. It's going to run into this shape. It's going to create its own track through there. Take some of that off. That's starting to come all the way down. I don't really want that come all the way through. This piece too, I need to arrest it. And that will only come so far. It's going to push forward, but it's because it's damp. Let's just come in now with some other values into this wetness and we can even come in with some warmth into that too just break that up that shape and i'm just going to come in here this way with some of these nice sort of branchy things coming out from our tree very very quickly and very randomly drawn i'm not trying to get too involved with uh, the actual branches and stuff that I'm seeing, I am trying to indicate or suggest them. Nothing more than that. Can I come in with a few coming out this way? And coming into the, maybe a bit of light there or something, just to break up what we're seeing in this foreground area. You can bring a lot of ground stuff coming through this way so that what you're doing here is creating a little bit of negative drawing whereby it could be frosty bits attaching uh, and, and creating sort of the lighter areas of grasses poking into this area if you don't want this to be so strong then just a quick zap with the water just like that just enough to make that go somewhere else and try to keep doing this area here it's going to do whatever it wants to i don't have a lot of um choice in that matter but you know i'm just bringing areas in now that orange and the blue made a good brown just putting it a little bit more blue into some of that now just darkening up some of the areas that could well be considered um thicket or dark areas of, of area behind all of this sort of we're going to come down this way and suggest we've got darks and lights coming into those darks and I'm going to bring that all the way out this way. And I'm getting really scratchy now. Very quick, very random marks. Quite thick paint. Now the paint won't be dry yet, but it will still be susceptible to a little bit of spraying. And that I'm going to look forward to and see exactly what happens. Now on the side of my picture, there's a great big tree on this side. It really doesn't bring anything into the party as such. So I'm going to leave that out altogether. Just going to bring in a bit more information here. So we've got a little bit of the tree coming up this side. And maybe a little bit coming out through there. Being a little more careful about my drawing of my tree. Trying to be a little more suggestive that it's old, maybe dying, or just lost all of its branch work, as it were, for the end of the season. I don't know. I just think it looks nice but i don't want all of that running down here all i want is to affect this area here so i'm going to just tap in just suggest a little bit like that it's going to run through here it's going to change the dynamic of that area but i quite like that what i might do just be a bit brave and just come away from a distance away just a quick blast onto some of those areas of that tree or those branches now where the water touches it may well loosen up some of that paint just to fur up a little bit and soften its edge. If it does, great. I'm not going to really push it too hard. I like what's happening here. If it continues tracking down and this one too, I'm not going to be bothered by that. I quite get excited by certain things of this nature, just doing their own, own thing. A little bit of warmth. I'm going to put a little bit of pure orange. Well, it's contaminated with the browns. A little bit of warmth into that. Pick up a little bit of that brown in there, that orange colour. Let that do what it wants to do. Quite like that. Okay, I'm going to pick up some of the orange warm colours. I'm just going to few splats in. Splats are fun. They break up the uh, look of the whole thing. And they add quite a bit of interest. And if one or two of them 
pop up into the sky. I'm not overly worried by that. I'm using that word a lot in this painting. I'm not overly worried. And truly, I am not. I am having some fun. And if you do something like this, please have some fun. Just enjoy the process. Do not get bogged down in, oh, that doesn't look right, or this doesn't go down right, or the paint's not going in there right. Just have fun. And it will do what it wants to do. You won't have too much to do with it, but it will do what it wants to do. And just enjoy that process. Just going to put in a little suggestion of a bit of dark down here. I'm using this edge to be maybe a little bit of rough ground on the edge of the bank. And just allow me to have a little solid color through here, which could be the edge of the ditch as it disappears and goes around that corner. Just going to give that a little blast to let that play around, let that come down. If I don't want to affect this, quite simply lift it back off before it has any major effect on that area. But it does soften that little area in there, which I quite like. All right, we're going to move forward and I'm going to come in here with a little tree or a little shrub or a little something that's growing up there. And I want to put it up on the bank up here. So I'm going to start it here. It's going to be somewhat cooler. So I'm going to add some more of the Payne's Gray into um, or create my blue values with this Payne's Gray. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to suggest I'm scratching. See how I'm using the edge of this brush almost dry, but I'm scratching what could be the branches, the open branches of my little tree here. And I will come down now and I will sort of suggest a couple of three. I think on the image that I'm looking at, there are sort of three main stumps or trunks, parts coming down. And I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to use some warmth just to tap that into the side there and allow my fence or my ditch line to run off to the left hand side. So I'm just going to put that in there and then I'm going to come down here and put that like that. I think that will do it and I'm going to wet some of this now. I just want, I want the hard edges. I'm going to try and just let that paint come down, let it dribble down. A lot of water on here, you just saw that all come out. But look how that just suggests um, contour, shape, form. Lovely. Look at that. I do love that. By putting that strong paint on first, it gives the paint momentum to break out and still have some residual effect where I first put it. I'm tempted to go up in here. I think I might just do that, you know. Just a quick little squirt of it in there and look at the way that that just blows away into that other direction do i balance it maybe i shouldn't maybe i will but too late now because i've done <laughs> i like that i just love having the fun there we go let's do some more let's put some darks in there because it's that much further away i really don't want to go in and put too much in the way of warms although i am tempted just to put a little bit down through here to come down and meet the ground as it were. But you've got a lovely little tree and that is going around the field. I'm just going to loosen that off, take that away. I love that spread. I love how we've got semi hard edges around here. We have a definite trunk and different planes of the tree. We have a dark side, a light side but it's just pushing away. Now, if the whole of this paper had been wet, that wouldn't have gone like that. But because it's bone dry, it's acting and it's doing, it It just moves so far. It will only go where it's damp enough. And if you look in the light, if you can see what I'm seeing, you've got a little glistening area around here from the spray bottle. The paint will track into that. There is a small chance that you will get a little residual um, effect of uh, a cauliflower but if I just tap most of that off there because the spread has done what it wanted to do and if I'm very very careful about that I should limit the problems that could be associated with a uh, organic form like a mushroom a, a, a you know cauliflower or caviar whatever you call them um, just a, a, a bloom I don't really want that but Never mind if it does happen, it happens. 
Okay, I'm just going to come in with a few splats. And splats are one of those things that, you know, they don't ordinarily happen in the real world, let's be honest. But for some reason in a watercolour, and even in oils, they can actually be quite magical and create something quite interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking at some of the growth that's coming around here. And I'm just going to try and just tap in a few bits of stuff like this over the snow area. Okay. Now we have all this and these little marks that are uh, punctuating through the snow. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some warm versions. Now I'm going to tap this way, so I'm going to limit where it goes that way. And I'm just going to do more gentle taps. Just want to put some nice shapes and forms in here and we're almost done i like the way that's gone and i'm going to reach for that little spray bottle and i'm just going to energize some of these by a little soft little soft spray so it doesn't hit them all but it actually hits some and just creates quite a beautiful uh, mark and i can tap some more in if you want to you can do as much or as little of this as you wish I like the way it just goes crazy and moves across the paper. Now, my paper is probably about 40, 40 I'm not measured it up, but I think it's about 40 odd degrees or at an angle. So what it does, anything I put on will move, will travel. And I quite like the, uh, the ability for the paint to move on the surface. If it's too flat, or indeed if it's too shallow a grade when you're doing this, it may not move swiftly enough for you. It may not travel the direction as you want it to. And don't forget, you can pick this up and move it around, do all sorts of things with that. But you may want to have the ability to, and the knowledge that it is going to move where you want it to and in the sort of degrees that you want it to. I'm just going to put a little bit dark in there, just up into that space. It looks like some old weeds or something that's growing up in here. And nothing's stopping you to come in with either a dagger or indeed just a little bit of strength in the paint, a little less water, and just imagine some of these little shapes in here like that. And just adding to somebody's perception of what they're seeing by increasing the chance that they could well be little bits of growth in there just wetting them down that spread a little more take up anything that's reaching the bottom we don't want it to push back with color just watch your amount of water that is on your painting i quite like what we've got i like the organic i like the sort of frostiness of the day the cold beyond there in the field i could enhance that further now and i think i might just do that i'm going to bring in another sort of fairly obvious element to a painting and that is that if this is nice and dry up here i'm just going to suggest a little bit of fencing so that it just gives some scale to the whole thing i'm mixing some Payne's gray with a little bit of the orange and let that sort of just Come down like so maybe a little bit down there and it's almost as though it's coming down the ditch towards the water and you can put in a little bit of wire anything you want really right through there there we go another one and that can go off out of the way there now, if that's too strong and you want that blurred, again, go for the old water bottle again. Just a little spray. That may have been a bit too aggressive, but I don't mind. It's still suggesting a fence line coming down, even though it looks completely annihilated by the water. I'm just, just having fun with it. Look at that. You can enhance that further if you wanted to. You can come back in. You can drop a little bit of colour onto that right in the center there it wants to spread but it will still give you a nice looking fence this is going a little crazy let's just limit that there it can't go too far on me because i'm taking 
its water course or water source away. There we go. Now that I want to just strengthen. I want to put in something a little bit darker because it got a little bit annihilated by that water pressure. But, you know, there we are. Lovely. Okay. Not so bad. Let's tap some of that off so it doesn't spread, keeps it nice and thin. There's a piece of wire suggesting between the fences. And while that's dried off, just add a little more dark into it. One or two of these places, especially there, it's got a little bit lost with the mark of the paper. There we go. I don't think I need to do any more. I think I've got a fence, I've got a ditch, I've got some growth on this side. I have a tree further out in the field and I have the sort of nice diagonal look. I've got this wonderful upright of this tree and the growth here. And there is the tracking out of the ditch line through here. Take some of this off. That's come down without me realizing it. Not a problem. None of that's a problem. Even if I missed it, it wouldn't cause too many issues. But as I was saying, that we've got this lovely triangle again. Now in a recent painting that I did in snow for you, I had a very similar idea where I put this tree up into this side and I had another tree into the distance ground and that just created a nice compositional dynamic. I've done the same thing here too. I've got a nice upright, nice triangle shape and that just is very very pleasing on the eye. Now I'm just going to do a couple more things. I'm going to put in a few birds. I do love putting birds in my paintings. And this is no exception. Just going to put in a few crows that may be flying through at the end of the day, whatever. Um, just always when you do this, make sure that you do odd numbers and different sizes. There's nothing worse than having even numbers when you're doing birds trying not to make rigid patterns with them either that's always the wrong so i'm going to put that shape in there <laughs> i'm not quite sure what that is <laughs> it's a very big bird and it's swinging around i don't know but i it, it's fun I don't care. I enjoyed that. I had a lot of fun with it. I do hope you guys enjoyed this process and watching this unfold. And by all means, you don't have to use my reference for your version. You can use almost any reference you have of a landscape off of one of these free sites. Especially you can use Pixabay Pexels or Unsplash. Pick up something that really excites you and then just run with it, play with it and see how it all turns out. I've lost a little bit of my um, effects here. Not overly worried about that. I think the overall finish is work or has worked very, very well. Not too sure about my big eagle out there though. <laughs> Never mind. It's all a bit of fun. And it is just a nice expressive way of creating a beautiful landscape and in just two colors. Now, the thing is that if your tones are about right, in other words, we've got two colors of blue and orange, but if I put enough water, I blow that blue down to a pale gray or a pale warm color. And if I bring my tones and my colors forward and put them very dark, even mixing them together, I create darks to lights. And those are the tonal shifts. And if the tonal shifts work throughout your painting then of course the colors pretty much are immaterial we know this from charcoal drawings and from pencil drawings ink drawings if you can create the sh the uh, tonal variation in just one color then you can certainly do it with two colors and there's only one step further to create the same idea with multiple colors all right enough of that i'm gonna leave you be now contemplating whether this worked or not. I hope you think it did. I had a lot of fun with it. 
And I think that if the reception to this goes down well, there's every chance that I will be doing more of these because I have a lot of fun with the idea of just playing around with the abstraction of the truth. So there you go, people. Take care. All the best until next one. Take care. Bye bye. OK, everybody, I had a lot of fun with that. I do hope that you did, too. And I actually do hope that you try this out yourselves. Now, there is no reference for this because it is just me doing something out of my head. And I'm sure you've got photographs of landscapes that intrigue you uh, near to where you live. And you can use those as the stimulus to create something yourself. But certainly the two color aspect you don't have to use those two colors either. You can use whatever color you wish or whatever combination of colors you wish. I just happen to like the blues and that dark blue of Payne's Gray. And I love that lovely warmth in that orange, pyrrole orange from Daniel Smith. So not a problem. Whatever one you want to use or whatever two or three or four colors you want to use, that's fine. The idea is just to have some fun. And I think that you saw that during the course of this video so okay so if you've enjoyed this video so far then please give it the thumbs up give it the like that will be fantastic and if you're not a subscriber and you're enjoying what i put out there please consider subscribing so few a number of those who watch are actually subscribers and it doesn't cost you anything to do that but it really does help support me it helps me create more videos to reach a lot more people so you'd be doing me a big big favor and my channel and also add comments i love to read them i'll always answer them especially if you've got thoughts and ideas for future videos so that will be fantastic moving forward and don't forget i did say that there was no reference for this one on my patreon but if you go over to my patreon there are loads of references to other tutorials on my YouTube channel. You do not need to be a patron to use those. They're free to download for the public. Have a go at it and put your results on our Facebook group, which is Painting with Paul Apps. Look it out, ask to join you, be admitted, and you can showcase your results on there. And if you're over on the Patreon looking around, hey, there's so much on offer. Take a look at it. You might want to get involved. You might want to be interested in that. And I'd love to welcome you on board. In the meantime, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, happy painting. Stay safe. Catch you all in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> I'll start this one again then. Hi, everybody. No, I've done that bit. That's at the start. Okay, everybody. I had a lot of fun with that. And I certainly nearly got in. No, I didn't nearly get into any mess. No, I don't get into a mess. Is it either works or it doesn't work. If I did, uh, well, I did. If you thought, uh, no, if you, no, no, that was okay, but I got wrong. So, so whatever colors doesn't really matter. So, it doesn't really matter. Whatever colors doesn't really matter. Just use some. <laughs> whatever colors you choose, doesn't matter. Um, okay. So, anyway, no, <laughs> that's even worse. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> Take 10, I think. Okay, so with that all said and done, if you've enjoyed it, then 